Does this look familiar? <laughs> if not, I'm going to link a video in the description of my mega repot from last year when I took after my fires tank and villier. I've got the same garbage bag as last year. Yes, recycling is important, but the candidate that we're going to be addressing today is Colmenara Masai Red. She is growing three new growths, which is wonderful. To my understanding, there is some new root activity. It is difficult to tell, but I did see one or two new roots. This orchid normally only starts growing her roots properly when she is in bloom, making it a little bit cumbersome because she is rather large to say the least. However, even though I believe she can stay in the pot because of how her growths are growing for another year, there are some declining pseudobulbs in that pot and I would like to get rid of them. It's not such a breezy day today. I think the conditions are ideal because I did not recycle any tape. I used what was on my poor man's tarp. <laughs> But I have a favor to ask you. Please stick with me. I have you in mind while I'm filming this video because I need to stay focused. This is going to go in stages. It can take hours. Don't worry, the video won't take hours. Editing gods be thanked. But I appreciate having you in the back of my mind so that I can get this project done and do it correctly, hopefully also being able to breathe and give you some tips and we can have a look at a root system, be it good, bad or indifferent. Let's see if she comes out just by pulling. <laughs> Gotta try, I doubt it. Oh wait, hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Masai Red. Yep, we've got new root growth. Oh, wonderful. Awesome. And yes, I'm on the floor with Lekka, so I've got to have my eyes 360 degrees so that I don't have a puppy come and take up all the Lekka that is here thinking it is kibble. Oh, let's have a look at this root system. I don't see him around. It's probably too hot for him outside. <laughs> Check this out. That pot looks nasty, but we'll take care of that afterwards. First of all, before I do anything else, and yes, I'm off camera because I'm picking up my Colmenara Masai Red, I need to put her into that water. Just in the meantime, while I do everything else, cleaning up the leka, bringing the tarp onto the east side table, etc. Oh, we're going to submerge her quite far, but I need the roots to be protected from the beautiful warm air and that's how she's going to stay for now. I'll be back when I have gone through all of the lecker because I do need to reuse that. I don't have enough in my stash to just fill up another pot of this caliber. Clean out the pot etc. You name it. So thank you so much for being here with me so far. I'll see you in probably an hour. <laughs> oh my goodness. By the way, the Colmenara is soaking in 500 parts per million of a balanced fertilizer. I did not use CalMag, I did not use seaweed. That's a lot of water, it's approximately 10 liters that I soaked her in. That's a full bucket for me, that is a lot of product. So I'm hoping she's gonna do just fine with that pre-soak and while she sits in that water. But in the meantime, you guys, I found a fourth growth. That's exciting. Right, I gotta get on with it. I'll see you just now. On the east side. Did I say one hour I'll be back? <laughs> I was a little bit too ambitious. That lecker did take quite a while to sort out. I think I'm now two hours into this project. Oh, but at least the orchid had a good soak. And the roots, the new roots, aren't actually hydrating yet. So that was also a good thing to notice. The next step is obviously take the orchid out of that 
slush that she's in right now, which will release some lecker, which I will then go and rinse, and then we're going to attack the root ball. A good thing about these pots is they're on wheels. <laughs> Orchids on wheels. Okay, I've got a new growth that I found, so we'll just be a bit careful. Uh, Nina, the roots. Okay, I need my eyes everywhere. Let's lift her out. Are you still with me? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I feel as though I really have become a bit needy when it comes to big projects like these, that I'm so reliant on knowing that you're here. <laughs> Full disclosure. Okay, I'm gonna rinse the pot, rinse the lecker, and I shall be back. It won't take as long this time. I already saw that I cracked a root down here, which is unfortunate. But you know what? With a project like this, things are bound to happen. Something I really want to be mindful of here, of course, is my lecker. It seems like maybe in a video I'm saying it again. Well, yes, I am saying it again, but it's been a long time since I said it last. So when I say something like that, it's kind of like my my personal reminder of things I want to make sure I don't lose sight of. Meanwhile, it's nice and warm, so the pups are resting inside. And yes, this is going to be a complete overhaul of the root system. Because I do not intend to do this again next year. <laughs> I'm guessing I have two Maasai Reds in here. I don't know if they will separate. I would like to get control of the moss in the center there. So that's all going to be happening. And I shall film as much of it as possible and then hope not to bore you to tears when I edit some things and leave some things, especially the dead pseudobulbs. Now there is something interesting here. I let a new root grow into a desiccating pseudobulb. I wanted to see if the root would survive so we can inspect that as well. But I am going to be very mindful of where my lecker goes while I take off dead roots, whereas usually I'm in my catch tray and then it eventually my entire tidy, tidy repot system just goes to pants because it's not that convenient. So I'll start off with what I'm doing now and I will get you in a little bit closer because quite honestly, I would love to sit down. <laughs> it's wonderful though, because this is an easy assessment of live versus dead roots, chunky roots. Even though she's an oncidium, you would think I'm dealing with cattleya roots. That's how chunky they are. So we're gonna be here for a little while. And if it takes really, really long, I'm gonna have to stop and get Siliano out for his free flight. I would like to have this project complete today. <laughs> but push comes to shove, we'll put a cloth over her and continue tomorrow. And then there's also the option of laying the orchid down, but because she's got new roots growing, even in the back, I don't want to crack them. So I'm going to see how far I get with having her upright and circling the perimeter, doing it that way. Now I'm taking out some very, very old pseudobulbs and they were buried in the media. So in my dry climate, I can get away with this. This is not rot because they were in the media. This is such an old pseudobulb, if it were rot, it wouldn't take this long to deteriorate. In my dry climate, this works because I have like a two or three finger lecker layer that stays dry on the surface. I would not recommend doing this in a humid climate, okay? Besides, these are super duper old. If it were rot, they wouldn't look like this. After three years in this pot, they would be black mush and I could just pull them out. So I still had to cut them. But again, high humidity climate, 
I would recommend against burying pseudobulbs the way I do. This is decline from age and they were buried, as you can see, way, way low. And they're still crispy in the rhizome. All good. But it's not propagation material, not at all. With the bases that far gone, that's not propagation material. Now I have some roots that look dead, but they feel super firm. So I'm going to try as best as I can to leave them be. Okay, two angles so far down. I've got a few more to go. I had to stop and bring Ciliano out, which is fine. At least he can play around there in his jungle gym while I do this. This way I'm not going to be rushed. I'm allowing myself a little bit of grace. I am not taking the dead roots all the way to the bottom of the rhizome, the pseudobulbs, if I can't get there. Okay, so if the leka doesn't fall off by itself and I only can get so much of the old root cut, I'm leaving whatever else is close to the rhizome as is. The reason being, this is extremely stressful. Even though I've got all the time in the world this afternoon, I'm gonna do this all in one day. I've never done a mega project and extended it into two days. I don't see that Colmenara must I read would be an exception. Unless something really untoward happens, but this is extremely stressful for the orchid. So me fiddling around, trying to get everything 100%, that's not happening. If I can get 80, 90% of the debris out, maybe do some weeding of <clears throat> fern that, you know, bugs me. These fern roots, they just bug me. They don't bug the orchid then that's what I'm going to do. And of course, being in an inorganic media, it's really not that big a deal if I don't get all the way to the rhizome. Now, would I do the same if I were to pot this orchid up into organic media and not fuss and take everything off to the top of the rhizome? Yes, I would. I would not fuss. Absolutely. No problem whatsoever. As long as we get the job done, get it done well with minimal damage to any actively growing new roots, the orchid is going to be just fine. The media in the pot, organic as well, is going to be just fine. You're doing the orchid a favor if you're being less pedantic. Sometimes it is necessary. In most cases, it is not necessary. And the cases that are necessary is if you're dealing with rot on the rhizome and you need to get in there, clear out the rot, etc. Then it is necessary to be really picky, pedantic, and the stress the orchid is under is not going to be, let's say, you're not helping the orchid by being, by tiptoeing around it. So only in cases of rot would I be a lot more aggressive with my cleanup than I am. It doesn't mean that it's not satisfying to actually get to the base though. <laughs> let's bring this close in as well and let's have a look see. I love finding a big cluster of dead roots. That means instant space and fresh gas exchange when I get that out. Yes, it is a workload, but it is an easy workload because it's so easy to identify live from dead roots. So I have to say I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Totally spent suitable. So these roots are firm. 
there is a cluster there that I can cut out because I'm not entirely sure where the rhizome is here. So I want to work my way down because if I can just rip it out, that'd be great. Maybe I can just cut the top of the pseudobulb out like that. The pseudobulb is <laughs> probably as old as the orchid is, probably one of the first that came out as she turned into a juvenile and probably one of the ones that she arrived with in my collection and was still intact. So let's assess this beautiful new space that we've created here. Woohoo! Goodbye fern roots. What I'm pushing down now is the rhizome where that pseudobulb was. It's so tempting. <laughs> I'm guessing there was another pseudobulb tucked in a way underneath it that I'm now getting out as well. Woohoo! Woohoo! I feel like Raiders of the Lost Bark. <laughs> get it? Get it? Get it? Okay, I'm tilting the orchid way more than I would really like to, but I have a beautiful cluster of dead roots in here. See that I avoid my hands. These snips are small, but oof, they can do some serious damage. The two pieces are wobbly within each other now. Not my plan. But anyway, let's look at this pseudobulb. And let's do some final touches and get her potted up. I wanted to see how a new root deals with a declining pseudobulb, and it clearly doesn't care. That root looks amazing. <laughs> So there's nothing wrong with a declining pseudobulb. Let me just protect that one there and just get that out. Happy days. Nothing wrong with a declining pseudobulb if a root pierces it. I was always curious, are they going to die? Is something going to happen, you know? What is the pH of that declining pseudobulb? It's just an interesting little thing, but doing great. So I'm just going to finish, I'm going to do some weeding, get rid of some of the excess moss, etc, etc. All of that is going to grow back. But for the rest of this, I think I've captured enough footage of the fiddle and the fandangle. Let's see if I can remove some fern roots. That's just my personal ambition now. Many moments later, <laughs> here we are. I did tilt her in the end because I got caught up in the rabbit hole of trying to get as many fern roots out. I probably haven't eliminated all of them, but I really, oh, I saw so many black roots. They were, yeah, they're my nemesis. Don't like them. And so I started to pull them out like that. <laughs> It's not looking too shabby from this angle though. I will turn her around just now and check out the other side because that's where we started. Much cleaner than I thought it would turn out. It's just been such a pleasure out here. Don't have to worry about Siliano because he's right in my line of vision. All in all, the only reason it's taken me longer than I thought now is because of those fern roots and that I just can't let it go. Are you still with me? Uh, big question. <laughs> Hast thou abandoned me? By the way, if you're still here, look at how much we've achieved. Would you please give this video a like? If you have any friends that love a good orchid root system fiddle cleanup, share the video. That would be awesome. And also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, let me know what I can do to gain your vote of confidence. I would so appreciate it if you were to subscribe to my channel, help me meet some targets that I have set for myself for the year of 2023. I would appreciate that so, so much. Thank you. Awesome, here we go. The last of my nasty leco, shrapnel, sorted out from stuff that I can use for orchids. This can go at the bottom. Sayonara until maybe when am I going to repot you again? Ideally, 2026. 
<laughs> if I'm still around. Now, the microfiber in a pot of this caliber is one strand, and I did not cut this in half. So normally my other microfibers are like half the size because I cut them. And this is a full one from a mop. Now, this is the rinsed leka right here, but do I fill this now with water? I should be true to form and fill it with water because that is what we do on the patio. We do gentle repots. Okay, I don't want to go too mad here because the roots are rather long and I don't want my orchid too high up in the pot. So I'm just going to place her right bang smack in the middle because we have four directions of growth. Two are right here. There's a tiny one coming out there. Theoretically, my left hand over here is the back of the orchid. And then I have two coming, one here, one there, on the other side of the orchid. So we're going to try and do this. Keep her in the middle. Make sure all the roots go back into the pot. And we're going to get ourselves some more water. So I have her in position. Now I'm trying to raise the pieces up together, just a tad. I don't want her super high in the pot. Did so well with the root tip that was growing into the desiccating pseudobulb. <laughs> when I went to get that fern out, I broke it. Silly, silly, silly me. Yes, she's deep in the pot. Now she's not a climbing orchid per se. I wouldn't consider her a climber, but at least this way I have more humidity around the pseudobulbs. So we've got that new growth, that new growth, that new growth, and the tiny one in the middle were all accounted for. Expectations for the future. Well, 2026 would be ideal. She's going to raise herself up and out of the pot the more roots she grows again. She is probably going to enjoy another growth right here, which could cause issues if I want to extend the time in the pot until 2026. Seeing as this lead right here is very, very close to the pot edge right there. But time will tell. For me, for now, Colmenara Masai Red has been repotted. And she is sitting in quite a bit of water, which I'm going to maintain for the duration of the evening. I will drain that pot tomorrow. It's just because the roots have been through quite a lot. They have been exposed for several hours my inner clock says, and if I'm mistaken, I'll put up a correct time, but my inner clock says it's about 6 p.m. So this project today took seven hours in total. I have no idea how long the video is going to be, but I'm going to be very happy if I know that you've been here with me all along. While I love me some good old Spanish afternoon sun, it can be a bit brutal and a little bit scorchio for orchids. Anyway, this is where my Colmenara Masai Red lives. But you see that palm tree leaf there? <laughs> Look at how it's protecting and shading the orchid. Small little tricks that I use on the terrace to protect my orchid from scorching. This way she can stay in her designated place and thanks to le palm tree that has seeded itself, <laughs> which I'm trying to take care of seeing as look what it's doing. I think it's amazing. And you know what else I think is amazing? We did it. So thank you so, so much for your support. Thank you so, so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. It was super important for me. This was a full day's work. The work isn't done yet. I still have to clean up the patio, but I think I'm gonna leave that for tomorrow. Not now. Siliana wants his popcorn and I want some lovings. So thank you for everything. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.